Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So in this one here, I want to break down the very final scene of episode two. So obviously this will contain spoilers for episode two, but if you've watched the episode, then uh, yeah, you've likely seen the ending scene to episode two. And it really honestly is one of the most chilling scenes I've seen in a very long time for, for uh, The Walking Dead and what it could mean for Rick, Michonne, and I guess all of Alexandria. And so I want to talk about that, talk about Jadis's uh, role, or I guess her return to The Walking Dead universe now after so long. And yeah, see where this can go over the next couple of episodes here. So definitely make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get all of my Walking Dead content like this. If you haven't checked out my episode two breakdown, I, I did post that earlier. I also posted an episode three trailer breakdown as well uh, for next week's episode, which I'm very, very excited about. I, I really cannot wait to see where, where the story is going to go now, because episode one and two obviously had to catch us up on everything, right? It had to catch us up on, you know, what uh, Rick and Michonne have been up to for the last however long and just sort of everything with, uh, you know, their story and whatnot. And episode three you know, we have them together now. And so now what is going to happen, right? Like, what's the story going to focus on next? We are now set in a really exciting, you know, uh, period here where we have Rick and Michonne together at the CRM and Jadis knows that Michonne is here. So that was one of the things that I was really, really wondering about, you know, uh, before watching this show, I was like, Michonne at some point is obviously going to be at the CRM or something's going to happen. But like, how does Jadis find out? And it's interesting that she found out as fast as she did. And a lot of it really honestly could be just a lot of what she's dealing with in terms of stuff with Rick, right? Like if there's anything that happens that Rick is involved with, she's going to be like looking into it and, and all that, right? So I'm assuming for Jadis, she heard of Okafor's death. She heard that there was some sort of attack or whatever on like Rick and, and all of them in the helicopter. She probably heard that they brought in somebody, right? So I think that's why she was like, I'm interested in this. I want to see who they brought in and all of that. And then she saw that it was Michonne and she was probably like, obviously very concerned about that. Right. And like what that could mean and all of that. And so then we get the very final scene here of the walking Dead: the ones who live episode two, where we do see Jadis actually uh, confront Rick about this. Like, she's just like, I'm doing this investigation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making it not that official, but you know, I, I know that Michonne is here basically. And so Rick is shocked by this. Obviously Rick was not expecting this. I think for Rick, he figured that once Michonne got there, that, you know, she would be put in the, the I guess, the CRM uh, Walker program where they had to, like, kill walkers and all that and then eventually join the CRM, right? And then I guess for him, he was like, I, I don't know if Michonne's going to survive out of this, but, like, you know, I'm just going to I'm gonna try to make things work here where we can actually try and escape. But I do think if, if Rick was just going to plan all this out, it probably wouldn't work because Rick tried to escape before and things didn't work, right? Though he does have a lot more power now, right? He is a CRM soldier. He has access to like a helicopter and all that. So I guess he could probably like, like actually get away. Could he go back to Alexandria and all that? Could he actually get away or would the CRM always be looking for him? Right. And so we kind of have our answer here because Jadis in the scene basically tells Rick, if you try to escape, you and Michonne try to escape, I'm going to take out everyone back at your home in Alexandria. Right. And so very, very, like, very scary scene. Like, basically, what, what she says to him is, this doesn't fall under our long-standing deal or uh, something like that. And you have to know that if you try to escape with her, I will make sure that all those people that you love die, including a few that I like very much, which I think is a reference to Gabriel, right? So um, it immediately gets very, very serious. And she's like, you have to know that, this and that. And she gets very serious about this, like she is going to do this. And so... There is some stuff that's interesting here. You know, she does say our long, like, outstanding deal or whatever. And so her and Rick made a deal, it seems like, um, in terms of why they're both at the CRM, I'm guessing. There's some sort of deal that's made. I mean, I don't really know what that means overall. Like, what, Rick's not going to tell the, the CRM anything about certain things about Jadis. I mean, that makes no sense because uh, Jadis knew the CRM before Rick and she didn't really do anything wrong afterwards, right? Like there was nothing that she really did there. Uh, she, if anything, kind of spared Rick's life, right? And she got a lot of power, I guess, because of, you know, the fact that she gave the CRM Rick. So I don't really know what she meant by that. Maybe it's more of a deal of like, I let you live. I let you be here. So, um, you know, don't mess things up for me here because things are going very good for me here, basically. Right. Like it might be one of those things because I don't really know what else she's she's referring to here. And the really amazing thing about this scene, actually, is the fact that Rick says nothing like Rick actually says absolutely nothing in this scene. It's all just. You know, he's reacting to everything. Andrew Lincoln, I think, really 
does an amazing job here where he's just kind of he's very shocked at what's going on and Jadis really it's her scene you know she's making her debut on this show and it's it's just a really amazing scene and I do think in episode three we're going to see a continuation of this scene so it's probably going to happen very early on in the episode but yeah and then we'll see Rick talk about whatever and say a bunch of stuff and that's where I'm really I'm curious on like some of the other details on like you know uh, does he acknowledge the fact that Michonne is here obviously he's going to and where does Jadis go after this? Like now that Jadis knows Michonne is there, does Jadis just like walk away and that's it? You know, um, does she try like, what's her goal right now? Does she tell Rick, like, I'll just let this be what it is, but uh, don't do anything. Just stay here. Keep doing your job as you're doing it. And uh, Michonne will do what she's going to do. And um, yeah, just keep things as is. Is that her plan? I feel like that's probably not going to be her plan. Like maybe that's her plan for now. But I think Jadis knows that if Michonne is here, they're going to try and get away because Judith is in Alexandria, right? So, like, th that's the thing. I think Jadis now sees Michonne as a big threat here, right? And she doesn't want her there at all. So I'm wondering if Beale is going to find out soon because I think that also makes a lot of sense. And I, I do remember there being something where, or maybe I just said that, but I remember there being something where it was like Beale doesn't like the fact that Michonne is there because, you know, it's causing Rick to, to do this and that and whatever. So maybe there is something there like that. And uh, I mean, it makes sense that you're not going to be a fan of Michonne being there because now Rick is going to try and escape, right? So I'm very curious on what the next step is here for for Jadis, like we know for Rick, he's going to try and get away. And I talked about the episode three trailer. I got into a lot of that there. And, you know, it, it does feel like at this point that their overall plan is going to be, we got to get away right now. Like we need to escape and Pearl Thorne could help them. I could see that, but it, it depends on where episode three goes. And it, it, what's crazy about it is like Pearl Thorne could so die in episode three. I'm expecting her to be around until the finale or something. Or like if they do do a season two, she'll be a part of that. But I thought Nat would be around for a bit more. I thought Okafor would be around for a bit more. So, like, maybe Pearl Thorne dies in episode three. Like, I could actually see that at this point now. Because, yeah, I mean, they're obviously not scared to kill off characters, right? Like, they'll kill off characters if they have to. So, I am definitely very concerned about, you know, uh, where things are going. But we do know roughly kind of the general idea. Like, there's a lot of specifics we don't know. But if you do remember... There was an EW article that uh, I think they were, they were there for filming last May, I believe, which was probably around episode five or six. But we had Jadis, uh, I think, in a car scene. There was like a chase scene or something uh, with Rick and Michonne. So Jadis is, is obviously hunting them down. Uh, she's trying to get Rick and Michonne. And I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of stuff that happens there. I mean, we have some shots of Jadis. It seems like she's looking for Rick and Michonne. So does she die at this point? Is this where we're going to see Jadis's death here? Again. Throughout all of this here, there's no like big CRM plan. There's no like big, like Major General Beal storyline sort of thing, right? And this is like at the end of the series. So I'm very, very like, I'm really wondering now, you know, if a lot of this is just focused on Rick and Michonne and some of the stuff here. And if we're sort of overall gearing up for the storyline for season two of you know, them trying to take down the CRM because it seems like Jadis is going to be the bigger villain here, I feel like, in this first season. And then, you know, Major General Beale is there, but he's more set up for like the future kind of thing. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting right now, because I mean, again, it just it kind of seems like that, right? Like we have uh, Jadis here and again, just a really shocking scene. I was not expecting this scene to actually happen in this way. Like it, it really caught me off guard. I, I was not expecting Jadis to be here. I talked about it a little bit where I was like, hmm, I wonder if, you know, they're going to be getting into something with the character. But I really was not like I wasn't actually expecting it to see the scene go down. And it was more just what she said. And it really feels like this is the Jadis that we've always known. Like World Beyond Jadis felt like Jadis, but she was a little different because it was like, I don't know, just the people she was dealing with. It wasn't like the the main characters or anything like that, right? It was just like a bunch of other side characters in the Walking Dead universe. And now we have Jadis specifically talking with Rick. And oh man, I have so many questions on like all of this here. You know, I want to know more about like what it was like for Rick when he first got there. Like, I don't know if they're going to give us flashbacks now. Are we going to see what went down when Rick first arrived at the at the CRM and like the deal that was made with uh, Jadis and the CRM in order to give them Rick? Because there's some details on that that have changed a lot from what we once thought, right? Okafor really wanted to keep Rick alive. It wasn't Jadis trying to keep Rick alive. Jadis basically just gave Rick away, got all this power and left, it seems like. And then Okafor 
was the person that was like, I really want to keep him alive because of all of this, right? And I do wonder if there is, you know, like, did Okafor and Jadis know each other? And also, where was Jadis in terms of, you know, the the rankings at the CRM? Like, is she at a higher ranking than Okafor? Because I'm pretty sure that Okafor was a uh, a lieutenant colonel, right? That that was his position. And so, is Jadis there? Is she much higher? Like, obviously, she has a lot of power in this place here. And I just think that, you know, in terms of when you look back at the last two episodes, they've really, really, like, they paced this out really well. You know, the first episode ends in such a shocking way where you're like, I have to watch the second episode, right? Because Rick and Michonne reunite. Like, who was expecting that? And then the second one here ends in a way where Jadis threatens Rick, like, with the worst thing ever, right? So it ends also in a very shocking way where you're like, I need to watch episode three because I need to see what's going to happen with Rick next, right? Like, what does he do now? And so, man, like, this show is doing so, so great. And again, this is Scott Gimple. And I, that's the thing that I will say, you know, like with Scott Gimple, obviously people like to focus on like the cliffhanger, right? And there was uh, obviously Carl's death. Two choices that I feel like are more, you know, like creative choices. But when you look at the story and emotions and like the format of some of the episodes, you know, it, it can be very exciting, right? Like I, I do think that how he ends episodes, it really is that sort of feeling where you're like, you got a lot in the episode and now you're going to the next one. And I will say that wasn't the case a lot with like The Walking Dead before. A lot of it was like you would watch an episode and there would be a storyline, but it wouldn't really necessarily be an interesting storyline. So I feel like Gimple's, you know, show running abilities and like his storytelling, it works really well, but you just need a very interesting story, you know, to make it sort of work. And it's actually like really it's phenomenal when you watch it. I think when there's not really a lot to tell and it's kind of a, I don't know, kind of a boring story, then it's like you don't really care overall. And so when there's a cliffhanger of some sorts, it's like you don't really care. And like that was it was build up for that. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's where there's some of the issues there, because I think that's what really, you know, those were the issues with season seven and eight. It was just it was a lot, you know, and so now we're looking at the ones who live episodes one and two. There was a lot that happened in both episodes. Now, I know the next couple of episodes, I think the pacing well, from what I remember reading in the early reviews from like a lot of people was that episodes one and two, I believe the pacing was everywhere. It's so fast and everything. But episode three, uh, the pacing apparently picks up a little bit, but it's not like in terms of, you know, moving in terms of the story. It's just that it gets more interesting. And I think it's because we have Rick and Michonne at the CRM. There's going to be a lot of like, you know, Pearl Thorne talking with Michonne and uh, Jade is talking with Rick and a lot of that. So we're getting into the actual story now, right? So it's going to be a little bit more interesting. But apparently the pacing does slow down quite a bit. And in episode four, it's just going to be Rick and Michonne. So that episode should be a much slower episode and doesn't really advance the story too much. So we'll have to see, you know, where the story goes overall. But Denai Guerrera also wrote episode four. So and based off of all the early reviews, everyone's saying that episode four is the best one yet, which I just find obviously kind of hard to believe because the first two here have been so great. But it just makes me that excited for episode four. I, I can't wait. I'm really I, I want to see Jadis more, though. I do want to see her more in this show. I'm hoping that she's just not going to like I'm hoping she doesn't just like die or whatever randomly. But I mean, if she does, maybe it's because she's the villain in this season. Right. But again, it's it's just sort of what she said there. You know, she said that if so, if you try to escape, you know, something bad will happen to you and Alexandria and and everything, basically. So I'm just wondering if that could be something where this show actually goes, because Alexandria is not going to be a place that really, if they do attack, is really going to get that affected because no one's there anymore. Right. So. I don't think she knows the Commonwealth or anything like that. So if something did happen where Rick and Michonne actually escaped, maybe that's where this season could end, right? Like maybe this season ends in a way where, I don't know, maybe they actually go and attack Alexandria. Maybe that's like the finale. Alexandria is gone. Or maybe that's the end of episode five or something like that. You know, it's like something so, so crazy that it's like this big cliffhanger and you're like, like what's going to happen now kind of thing. But you also got to remember on top of all of this here though, no one is there, right? Like no one is, is there at all. And so I don't know what that means in terms of the other spinoffs. Cause that would mean this show is taking place afterwards because Carol can't know of that. Maggie and Negan are also in New York and whatnot, or I guess Maggie's not anymore. She's back at the bricks, but they would have to sort of manage a lot of that there, but they could do that. And it would be really crazy for dramatic purposes in terms of, what Rick and Michonne would go through because they, they're all thinking right there. We, we just lost Judith and RJ, right? But 
technically know because they're at the Commonwealth, right? Remember, Michonne doesn't know about the Commonwealth, right? So they could actually do that and they'll overall be fine because nothing, there's no one in Alexandria, right? I mean, there, there's probably gonna be some people that's like an outpost or whatever, but like everyone is staying at the Commonwealth now. So they've actually moved locations. So I, I think it would be really interesting. It would be really crazy. And I wonder if what Jada said here, could it actually happen? Because like you say something like that, that's crazy. And obviously where the show's going to go, you're just expecting like, well, it's not going to happen. Like they're just going to escape and everything will be fine. But imagine if they actually pushed, pushed it that much farther and they're like, no, we're going to make that happen. And so everyone's thinking something so crazy happened. But obviously if you've watched The Walking Dead, you know that they're fine, right? Because they're not in Alexandria anymore. I mean, there could be some characters that do die though, because there might be some people staying there. But yeah, it just makes it very interesting. And again, the storyline, this ending scene was just really like, I just, I wasn't expecting it. But anyways, post your predictions down below. What do you think this scene is going to mean overall? And uh, post your reactions to the scene. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.